Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we'll learn how to open meeting links automatically when it's just about to start using Microsoft Flow. And first, let's get the demo. So I've set up a meeting for 8 p.m. And uh, it should open my meeting window automatically in a few seconds over here. All right, as you can see, it, there was a URL that just opened. And it will open Teams because it was a Teams meeting. And you can see Teams is opening up. And I have the join now option so I didn't have to do anything just need to click on join now and the meeting gets started all right now let's uh, see how to implement this before that let's close the meeting go back to the Chrome browser so I, I am using Microsoft flow um, to uh, to kind of uh, create this kind of a structure where anytime a meeting is starting, it uh, opens the URL on my Chrome browser and then um, it automatically starts the meeting. So if you want to, this is in a nutshell, when an event is starting soon, that's my trigger. I'm getting the URL of the meeting and then I'm using the HTTP request and using push bullet which I'll talk about uh, later in the video, to uh, push the URL into the Chrome browser on your desktop, or on my desktop. All right, so um, let's, let's make the flow step by step. Okay, so I need the Outlook trigger to um, so that uh, whenever a meeting is starting soon. So if you search in Outlook, there's a, a trigger called when an upcoming event is starting soon. So we'll use that. Use the calendar ID as calendar. In the advanced options, I can select uh, my look ahead time. So this is in minutes, 15 minutes. We could set it to like three minutes if I, I don't want the meeting window to start so soon. So I'm just going to use three minutes. And my next step, I, uh, I, I basically want to get the URL of the meeting, right? So I will use uh, a variable, initialize variable. We'll call it uh, index for URL um, and I'll tell you how we are doing that in a minute over here string is actually an integer because it's a number so uh, let me show you how I'm getting the URL Okay. All right. So, um, what we do is once we get once we use that trigger, it uh, in the trigger we get um, within the body of the URL, um, body of the the event, and this all is inside there. And uh, we can also see it uh, in this meeting. Okay, so you see over here. So this is like a. Um, this is basically the body of that event. So we will use that. And uh, what we want is this URL over here, the Teams meeting URL. So to get that, we're using some logic expressions. Um, basically, try to find the index where this URL is starting and where it's ending and then um, save that in a variable. 
So what I first need is the index of this uh, HTTPS. So I'll find this position of um, this HTTPS uh, kind of starting of the URL. Uh, and then once I have that, I'll take this whole string and uh, within that string, I would, I'll find the first double quotes. That kind of tells me where my URL is ending. So once I have this position and the position of this double quotes, I'll uh, just get the substring or basically this part of it by speci by using the substring function. So we'll be using this and I'll be putting that in the, to the variable and I just wanted to sh show you how the expression works. So this trigger body um, is basically the, uh, the event kind of trigger um, and I mean, sorry, it's the, so trigger body is the event of the trigger. The body is the body of the event. And uh, from there, so th th this is, sorry, so this is that body. So within that body, um, I'm taking a substring and uh, I have the index for URL defined. So that's my first variable where I'm finding the position for this HTTPS teams.microsoft.com. So it finds the position of these of this edge and the substring function, you need to give the, the string that you want to get a substring of. You need to specify the initial position. That's the index of this URL. And then I'm basically putting like thousand characters. Um, the URL probably is sometimes gets really long so uh, just to be on the safer side i specify thousand it could be more in your case so you might have to define it differently and then um, so once i've got this so this is my substring now within now from that substring i want <laughs> uh, it's kind of a inception of substrings here <laughs> so i want only this portion so I'm using the substring function again. Um, so my string now for this substring is this. So this is basically this that we just got. Now in that, I want to start from the zeroth position. So in a substring, the zero position is the first position. Um, so you need to start from there and you want it till the in position of this double quotes. And that's why I use the index of function again. Um, and within the index of, I'm using this substring, uh, basically the same thing that I got over here. And I'm trying to find the, the, the position of the double quotes. So if you see over here, it's the double quotes. So, I've got the zero at, I've got the double quotes position and uh, within this substring now I have this URL. So this whole thing is giving me the, uh, the URL that I need to open in my uh, browser. All right, let's move on to the flow. Let's go back there. Okay, all right. So first I want the index for URL. So what we'll do is we'll say, I need index of, uh, here the string, what I need is the body. And somehow it's not coming over here. Okay, let's go back. Yeah, I don't need to see the C more option, so I probably will have to define it. Um, and just to show you again, uh, this is one of the run that we, oops. 
Let me open one of the flows that just ran when we did the demo. So when this is my trigger and this is the output that I got from the body um, from that trigger. So in here, this is my body. Okay. So what we need is we want this body, which somehow we are not able to see in the variables over here. Uh, okay. In here. So what we'll do is we'll uh, do an expression index of. Now just to show you how it's done, I'll just put subject. But so this is how I got the subject, but I don't want the subject. I want the body. So I'll say body. And now it should have been okay. All right. So now it's seen. So yeah, you can see the body over here. Somehow it was not showing it earlier. All right, so you need to define the, the string that you need an index from, and then I need to define the the, the search string that uh, I need to find. So I would say you need single quotes, um, and I want to start it from https colon teams dot meetings dot com. So that's how all the Teams meetings uh, URL kind of are defined. If you have a different uh, meeting um, kind of host or like a Skype meeting, you probably want to use um, meet.link.com. And uh, similarly, if you have a ring, there will be a URL for that. So all these URLs are generated in your, uh, whenever you create the event. So you can look at it and uh, try to form your own way of finding the URL. So we'll use this, say okay. Now the next step is I want to have a variable um, for the URL. So this is an old spell. Okay, initialize variable. I'll say, oops, not Skype. This is the meeting URL. Could be anything. And one thing which I missed out over here is the index of will return the position. Uh, however, it won't it it won't be in the form of integer. It will be a string. It will define it as a string. So what we want to do is we want to use the int function, which basically converts a string, which is probably in number format, into a value, into a, an integer. So we we'll say. It'll, we we use the int function for that, so I'll update it. All right, going back to my uh, meeting URL, I'd say a string. Now I can define that function that we just talked about over here and uh, that over here. Uh, however, um, we also want to check if there is any index. I mean, if there is any URL, what if an event does have doesn't have any kind of URL, so you don't want to trigger it off every time. So we'll put a condition to check if there is an index. Um, so this is the index for URL. And uh, I can show you what generally the index is returned as. So if there is an index, I mean, if there is the link inside the, the body, um, it will get the value. However, if there is no URL for the meeting or that you are searching for, um, the index for your uh, the index of function returns negative one as the value. So um, we'll check if this index is not equal to minus one, then we want to. Um, get this uh, meeting URL. So set variable for the meeting URL and I will copy uh, Uh, all right, copy. 
speed, enter variable value, expression. Okay. Okay. So this would give me the the, uh, the meaning URL. Now just to try it out, what we can do is let's first name it automated meeting meeting window and we will save it. And I will create an event here. Let me pull this out, new event. This automated window, oops, meeting window, and I'll say it's a Teams meeting. And just so that we can get the trigger working soon, what we'll do is it's eight fifteen now. So yeah, let's put eight seventeen. Oh, it's already eight sixteen. So let's put <laughs> eight. 19 just to be safe and then uh, save events created now um, so we put eight uh, what did we put it as 819 and now it's 816 so let's go to our flow and say let's see how much time is okay we will say two minutes and it should start then recording all right so two minutes that means at 8 17 the trigger should start so hopefully it works oh it's already triggered okay so this was the event that's automated meeting window. Uh, the initialized field. Oh, we didn't get it. Where should we? Did I do something wrong with the? Oh, all right. So my URL for the Teams meeting was wrong. It's teams.microsoft.com, and that's there. You go. It's not Teams for meetings. It's Teams for Microsoft. Let's change this. So this is kind of you how you kind of even troubleshoot if your flow is to try again, do some tests and try to see how it's working. Click on update, save, and we can test it from here itself. We'll say use data from previous runs, the one we just got done, test it. It still has an issue. Minus one. Let's see. Story. Oh, it didn't change. Let's change. Update. I guess it didn't save it, I guess. All right, let's save it. Test. We'll do the same test again. Okay, so we did get, so you see the value 556. Um, and then here in the set variable, see we got the URL. Woohoo! Now it's the next step. How do we uh, send this URL to, uh, to your browser? I use this, uh, uh, kind of, I would say uh, a tool called push bullet. I don't know if you have heard about it, but it's basically um, you can install it on all your devices and you can uh, share uh, data or text or anything between these devices. So if I have a link here, if I want to um, 
So this is the extension for push palette uh, for Chrome. I can uh, just type in a message and send it or I can attach a file. And once I send it, it sends it to everywhere where I have this installed. And I can select what all devices I want to send it to. So we'll be using this to uh, send the URL to Chrome. And uh, when you when the URL gets opened in Chrome, it automatically opens the Teams meeting as well. So um, now how do we do that? So Pushbullet has an API. Yep, APIs. I, I just can't uh, do a video without APIs. <laughs> um, so what we need to do is um, once you create an account, I can show you once I sign in, sign in to the account. Okay, so if I go to my account, I have to say create access token. Um, this is what I'll need to uh, use the API. So this is my access token over here. I just copy it for now. And then um, what we need to use in the API is basically I first need to list the devices so that I can get the device ID that I need to send the URL to. Um, so I want to send it to Chrome and I'll, I need to find the ID for that Chrome uh, device that Pushblit creates. And then uh, once I have that ID of Chrome uh, browser extension, I need to push, like create a push to that device. So I'll be linking, um, I'll bring the link to the documentation. You can uh, kind of look around it and play around with it. But uh, for this video, we will cover these two and the list devices and the create push. Uh, so that you can understand how we did it in the flow. So let's go back here. Uh, say edit. So we need the third step. That's creating the uh, HTTP request to push for that. So let's say HTTP. This is a GET request. So let's go back to the API documentation. So list devices. Um, now, so you can run this. So I'll first, I'll copy this. I put that URL over here. Now, uh, this is how we need to define the access token and the And then you also need to say that the content type is JSON. I'm not sure if you need it over here, but we'll just put it just to be safe. Um, and going back, I need to get my token again. Copy that. Go here, paste it. Okay. Oops, I already have, uh, that should be my header and then the queries. All right, so this will get give me the devices that I need. So um, you can run a separate flow just to get the device um, IDs uh, for, for your Chrome extension or whichever browser you're gonna use this extension on. Um, and then uh, um, just use that ID in that uh, push uh, HTTP request. So I created a separate uh, flow. So that's just uh, a button. Uh, I mean, a manually trigger a flow in the HTTP request for this um, to get the devices. So let me put the new, oops, I need to get this token it over here and we'll just test it. Uh, 
and flow done and so this is the body uh, of the out I mean the output that we got so for Chrome a device ID is this so it's an it's called IDEN uh, that's the that's how you'll find the ID that you need in to create the push request. So let's go back here. We actually don't need this um, unless you're gonna use this different window every time or a different Chrome browser. Or, I mean, yeah, so if you have one Chrome browser where you're gonna use this again, again I just don't need this. So we'll delete this. And I'll put the, again, oops, I could have just used the HTTP. <laughs> uh, so I, this time I need to post because this is kind of creating a push. So we are sending some data as well, uh, the URL. Um, now for creating push, it's under push, create push. Uh, these are all the, um, so I need to specify the device ID and that we got from the other flow and uh, what we need is to send a link so our type is link the title of the link is anything that you want it to be um, the body is a message that again you can decide anything the url is the place where we need to send the link that we got uh, from the, the meeting invite so let's go back and I already have that. So we just copied from there. Oops. Not that. Okay. So let me copy this. And let me first copy the, the create push um, URL, the curl URL. This is the URL that we need to did specify it's a post request. Copy that, paste it right here. Again, the same access token. So copy it from here, paste it, and then content type is applications JSON so I need to specify the device ID uh, body could be anything and I mean I really don't care because it's just opening the URL and opening the team's meeting and then the URL part is the meeting URL that we just got from here so that's how I added it in here and the type is link that it knows that we are sending a link so that it can open it directly uh, in Chrome. Okay, I think we have everything set up. So we just hit save. And uh, we don't need to set up a separate event. We can just use the one which we tested it with. It will open the URL here. So we click on just so that don't miss anything funny over here. <laughs> um, we'll click on test now. And you see, it, it just opened the meeting. The URL is opened over here. Um, you, and then it opens the Teams meeting. Now one thing which uh, you might have to do is uh, uh, the, it, it might, uh, for the first time when you're opening a Teams meeting URL, Chrome generally asks, always open this with uh, the, the open these types of links with the Teams app. So just click uh, kind of check box that as yes, and then um, you won't have to click on open link. It'll just open it automatically. Um, so that's, uh, that's how we got uh, this working. Now, uh, there were two questions. Uh, when I posted uh, a poll for this, if somebody wanted to use this. Um, so there were two things that people asked. 
Um, one thing was, what if they want to be fashionably late to the meeting? Uh, <laughs> so some people just want to join like five minutes late. So what you could do is, right now, uh, this is just for, I mean, this trigger is look ahead time. I have not tried it putting, putting a negative number over here, but what we could do is you could just say one minute and then there could be a delay. I think that's, yeah, schedule or delay. Yeah. So you need to use delay, specify the count of the, of the unit to delay. So let's say you want to join uh, five minutes late. So start from one minute, say count and the unit is minute. So whenever this trigger starts off, it will wait for six minutes and then it will me uh, start the, I mean, do the other actions. So this way you can be fashionably late to meetings <laughs> uh, if you don't want to join like, before the meeting starts. And the other thing that, uh, uh, this question was from Gita. She asked if uh, um, you can select uh, specific meetings um, to run this flow for. Now, I would say you probably have to define either, maybe it's a different calendar that you have those meetings in or um, you need to use some attribute from that uh, email trigger. So um, let me make it. So in the body, you're getting all the subject, uh, the time, the importance, uh, the, I don't know, the categories. So you could use the category as well. Um, if there is, I mean, you could, Basically, anything inside this, um, maybe importance, like if these are important events, um, the, like if it's like, if the importance is high, the value of this is two. If it's normal, it, it's one. And if it's low, it's zero. So maybe you want to only have the important ones to trigger that, um, you, I mean, opening of the meeting URL. So um, importance could be one, categories could be another. And uh, I don't know if there is something in the body of the event that you want to find. And only based on that, you want to uh, filter out some meetings um, to open automatically. Okay. Um, so the benefits I would say for this is you can, um, you, you can get rid of Outlook meeting notifications overall. The, and other benefits, I would say, enjoy the automation. It just opens the Teams meeting. Um, one thing which you might want to say is it doesn't join automatically. So I still have to click on join now. I am not sure how to do that right now. Maybe there is some way to define it in the URL. Uh, if, if you know about it, let me know. Uh, but if you use a Skype, if you use Skype meetings, if you put meet.link.com uh, as your uh, kind of finding the Skype meeting URLs, for me, it, it just opens automatically because Skype doesn't ask you to join. It just opens the window. So that could be, uh, if somebody knows how to join, how to get this enabled automatically, please let me know. And um, I think it would work for any other types of uh, meeting URLs as well. So try it out. Let me know in the comments if you tried it. And um, the last thing I would say is <laughs> enjoy the uh, look cool. I mean, it, it, it would just look cool <laughs> whenever uh, somebody is sitting around you and they say, oh, the meeting starts automatically. Um, so yeah, uh, it saves you time. It saves you some anxiousness around the meetings. And um, it's a nice way to learn flow as well. So uh, if you if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, uh, let me let me know in the comments area below, and let me know what other videos that you want to um, see from me.